Hey there everyone, welcome back to the 45 Home Lab channel. Zach here again, talk about the release of Unraid 7, specifically one big feature, and that being the introduction of native ZFS support. So full disclosure, I've only dipped my toes into Unraid so far, still wearing the water wings, you know, so today's video will be a high level overview, but it's an important one. So Unraid has technically had ZFS support via plugins or custom builds for a while now, but with uh, Unraid 7, ZFS is officially baked onto the platform. And that's raised a lot of questions like, should I pay for Unraid or go to ZFS on Linux? So today we're going to compare Unraid and ZFS, what they do differently, where they overlap, and what you should consider before choosing. So let's jump into it. So let's start with the fundamentals of Unraid. So Unraid is built on Slackware Linux, uses a unique storage model, it's parity based and you don't need matching drives in terms of size or speed. So each disk operates independently which is great for power savings and files are written whole to a single disk making recovery as simple as mounting a standalone drive. It does come with a one-time license model though, $49 per license and you attach up to six drives, one year of OS updates, $109 for unlimited drives, one year of OS updates, and finally $249 for lifetime, which has unlimited drive attachment and OS updates uh, for life. So ZFS, on the other hand, it's a copy on write file system with built-in RAID. It organizes your disks into VDEVs, which can be mirrors or RAID Z groups, and stripes the data across those VDEVs. So you need to be more thoughtful about your layout, but in return, it gives you serious data integrity and performance, and all entirely free, sticking close to that open source model we love. So at a high level, Unraid gives you flexibility with the ability to add one drive at a time and simpler expansion. ZFS, more thoughtful consideration on the initial creation of the ZPool, but with rock solid data protection and performance. So let's dig a little bit deeper into how each system actually manages data under the hood. For Unraid, drives are formatted individually, usually with XFS, which is the default, ButterFS, and now ZFS uses a parity-based array, not striping, so each file lives fully on a single disk. You can mix and match drive sizes, add drives at any time, and still maintain redundancy with one or two parity drives. You can also pull out a disk and mount it in any Linux system, which is super helpful for recovery. Now, there's no concept of VDEVs or stripe volumes, just independent disks managed through the array. array. ZFS, on the other hand, it's both a volume manager and a file system. You don't layer it on top of RAID, it is the RAID. So pools are made out of VDEVs, those being mirrors or RAID Z1, 2, or 3 groups. It stripes data across all the VDEVs, not individual disks, and performance, uh, performs copy on writes for amatosicity. That's a hard one for me to say. Now, you can learn more about copy on write on our enterprise channel here, uh, or here, here. Every block is checksummed and ZFS will automatically self-heal data if corruption is detected and redundancy exists. So you can't expand a VDEV by adding a single disk unless you're using ZFS 2.3 or higher. And you have to replace all the disks if in a VDEV or add a new one entirely, which can be limiting. So the TLDR, Unraid is about ease, expandability, and per disk flexibility. ZFS is about integrity, performance, and robust storage operations. Now, here's where Unraid shines, and that is the GUI. So with native ZFS support, you can now create ZFS pools right from the Unraid web interface. And you can assign them as cache drives, use them for storing VMs, Docker containers, or just high performance storage. But, and this is an important but, Unraid ZFS interface is still pretty bare bones. You don't get GUI options for, let's say, snapshots, compression, data set tunings, send and receive replication. For that, you'll still need the CLI. If you're unfamiliar with the CLI and just need the basic features of ZFS, then Unraid might be the right choice for you. But if you want deep control, you'll want native ZFS like we have on offer. So there are a lot of GUIs that do ZFS, but when it comes to ZFS and the GUI, I need to mention our own offering, that being Houston. So it's built using the Copic project on Rocky and Ubuntu, completely open source and has all the above, plus more regarding ZFS. It's built right in and it has an easy to manage uh, web GUI. It has persistent terminals uh, for any power users that are out there. And it comes with a purpose-built module, multiple actually, that are tightly integrated with the hardware and software. And this is all available with our fully burnt in options on the 45 Home Lab website, or you can pilot it in a VM, other hardware to test. Now let's go through some of the features between the two. Now, what Unraid offers that ZFS alone doesn't, uh, you can add any drive at any time per shared disk control 
file stored per disk, the readable without uh, the array, built-in VM and Docker management, plug-in and community app ecosystems, simple drive replacement and removal, multiple file systems supported, XFS, ButterFS, and ZFS. So what ZFS offers that Unraid's array doesn't, block level checksumming and self-healing, copy on write, snapshots and clones, transparent compression, so LZ4, ZSTD, ARC and L2 ARC intelligent caching, native replication with ZFS send receive, RAID Z2 or 3 for multi-parity setups, performance tuning and data set level control using ZFS um, inside. So Unraid gives you some of those features, but not all. You can get ZFS storage, but without the full GUI access to the powerful features like snapshot scheduling, data set config, or replication. Unraid ZFS support is strong, but still a bit green for those familiar with ZFS. So no GUI for snapshot scheduling, no native send receive workflows, no easy L2 arc or arc tuning um, from the interface. So deduplication is available, but not exposed via the GUI and usually not recommended anyway, unless you have a very specific workload that it can benefit from. If you want to know the why behind that, I covered it in more detail in our ZFS 2.3 release video located here. So right now, it's a great hybrid option for light ZFS use or new users, but if you want full ZFS functionality, you're still uh, going to need the CLI or stick with a ZFS distro that has a GUI like Houston or others that are out there. Now, if you're building a storage server and want a friendly GUI, mixed drive support, and VM slash Docker integration, Unraid's a great platform. And now with ZFS support, it's even more flexible. But if your priority is snapshots, replication, uh, and data integrity at scale, native ZFS on Linux is still gonna be great. Now, what do you agree with? What do you think I may have gotten wrong? So what would you like to see more of? Are you running ZFS on Unraid, Linux, or something else entirely? What features do you wish Unraid would add next? So do you wanna see a follow-up? Maybe performance testing uh, with Unraid on ZFS. As always, thanks for watching 45 Home Lab. If you found this breakdown useful, give it a like, sub for more ZFS storage deep dives. If you want to see what we have on offering, go to 45homelab.com to see our products, jump into the forum, see what others are doing with their 45 Home Labs, ask questions, and be part of a growing community. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Happy Home Labbing.